Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We've got a lot of wonderful things that are going to warm you right up today. <laughs> well, let's get started with our Easter proclamation. Because the women came to the tomb on this first day of the week, hands laden with the spices of sadness. And so we come this morning, hearts broken by the sin of the world. Christ met those women, sent them right down the path to tell others that the tomb was empty. Let us also meet Christ this morning in our songs, in our story, in our scripture, in our meditation, to tell the good news of life is indeed stronger than death. For Jesus Christ, our life is risen. Join with me in prayer, please, for the blessing of the fire. Eternal God, giver of light and life, bless this new flame that by its radiance and warmth we may respond to your love and grace and be set free from all that separates us from you and from each other. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, illumine our hearts and minds. Christ, our light. Thanks be to God. Jesus was baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, became living water to a woman at a Samaritan well, washed the feet of the disciples, and sent them forth to baptize all the nations by water and the Holy Spirit. Blessed by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, that by it we may be reminded of our baptism unto Jesus Christ, and that by the power of your Holy Spirit we may be kept faithful until you receive us at last in your eternal home. With what of the prophets announced the new covenant that you would make with all humanity? In the water, made holy by Christ in the Jordan, He made our sinful nature new in the bath that gives to her. Let this water remind us of our baptism. Let us share the joy of our brothers and sisters throughout the world who are baptized this Easter through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Today's scripture is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood
stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. They did not believe the word because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The story of that first Easter we just heard from Scripture is so vital and important and special to all of us. We have three women, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and also Mary, the mother of James, arriving at the tomb early in the morning to bring spices. Why spices? They had no decomposition back. They wanted to take care of the smell of decomposition back then. They had no embalming at that time. And so they wanted to keep things as fresh and sweet smelling as they possibly could. But then, wait. Is that Joanna? I still can't believe this happened. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Maybe it might be best if she told the story. Oh my god. Oh my god. I am so sorry, guys. I'm out of breath. It was a really long walk. I'm so glad to see all of you here today. Have you all heard of Jesus? Oh, yeah. Did you hear about his crucifixion a few days ago? Oh, my goodness. I was there when he was put on the cross. It was the most horrible, terrible, unimaginable scene thinkable. But he has done so much for me in my life. I knew I had to stand by him to the end. You see... I suddenly got very, very sick, and no one seemed to know how to cure my illness. That is, until I met Jesus. He knew how to cure me. So I knew from that day forward I would forever dedicate myself to him as one of his disciples and follow him everywhere. So you can imagine how devastated I was when I found out what happened to him last Friday. It was so sad to see him on the cross. I never thought I would see that day. But being strong, I knew I had to be strong. I volunteered along with two other women, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James. We said, we volunteer. We will wash and prepare his body for the tomb. So we gathered all our spices and the proper linens, and we washed him and we wrapped him. And we wrapped up for the day because it was getting late. So we sealed the tomb and we decided to head home and we would return after the Sabbath. So the next day approaches and we go to the tomb and we see the door is open. I don't remember leaving the door open. I asked the other two, did they leave the door open? They said, no. They said, well, you're in front. You go peek inside and see what you, see what you find in there. So I went inside and what did I find? These, only these. These were what we wrapped Jesus in. 
He was gone. We stood there shocked, dumbfounded. How could he just disappear? I mean, he was dead. We were very confused. And if that wasn't crazy enough, these two magical people just decided to beam down, and they're wearing bright clothes. I know I might sound crazy for saying this, but I could have sworn they glowed. <sighs> we were so taken back, shocked, we like fell to the ground because we were trying to shield our eyes. We didn't know what kind of magic they had. They stood there and looked at us and said, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? We were confused. We're like, what do you mean? They said, he's not here. He has risen. I've heard a lot of stuff in my day, but this, this couldn't be right. Could it be possible? It's unimaginable. As shocked as I was, I knew I had to share this information with the others. So I said to Mary and Mary, we're going to split up. We're each going to tell some of the disciples and the people in the land what happened. And they said, oh, they'll never believe us. I said, if we bring these linens as proof, they will believe us. So we headed off towards the town. I know, this all sounds crazy, like it's written in some kind of book. But it's not crazy. I'm here to tell you it is the truth. He has risen. Tell all the others. Tell everyone. Shout it from the rooftops. Just let everyone know that he has risen. I might have to go take my own advice. I still haven't told Peter and the others what happened. I better go or, you know, they won't believe me. I gotta go. Bye! <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. The joy of Easter is a joy that absolutely must be shared. You take a moment and turn to your neighbor now and tell them how glad you are that they're here to share with you this joyous Easter celebration. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have come to us in Jesus Christ. You have illuminated us by your holy flame and baptized us with water through the Holy Spirit and forgiven our sins. We hail you in the risen Christ who brings to our dark world the glory of an eternal morning. Roll away the stones of doubt and fear which keep us from a strong faith and a bold witness. We who live in darkness come to you beseeching you to show us the empty tomb. Show us that in you death becomes resurrection that through your power we can rise from our dead selves and live a full life free from the bondage of sin and fear. Stir our souls with joy as you move among us. Let us, like Joanna, hear you calling us by name in the midst of waiting and sorrow and longing loneliness, where our hearts have ceased to sing. Let Easter songs of victory awaken new melodies of hope. Be the living master who goes before us, healing the wounds of sin and lifting up the truth of life that will claim our love. Thanks be unto you, O God, for the victory you have given us in Jesus Christ. Bless us now with the grace to become faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to be starting to enter into the sanctuary. It's going to be a little warmer there. <laughs> but I would like you to carry the flame when you go inside. Today we are actually going to have ushers to give you communion and to take care of the offering. 
So that'll be a little bit different. We'll just uh, have that today. And we're, we're happy to start that tradition once again. What I'm going to ask is I will hold a basket out here. Take a candle. Take a moment here. Light it. Protect the flame as you can. Best we can. <laughs> Good luck. And head into the sanctuary. Listen, if something happens, we will have people light it when you get inside. All right? We'll give a relight when she arrives inside. But in the back, you'll find some votives in the shape of a cross. Again, take a moment at the beginning of Easter. The importance of this past year, light one of the votives, put the candle out then, put it in the basket, and go to your pew, and then we'll continue our service there. Please come forward. to God, that he may guide us through the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask the blessing that we may be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, and pleasing you as we should in all things. May we bear fruit in every good work and in our service to others. We ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise and let's join our hymns. Christ the Lord is risen today. Number 233.
near with a true heart, confessing our sins unto God our Father, so that we might be granted forgiveness. Let us pray. God of our faith, the events of Easter, the trumpet of the resurrection of Christ, calling us to live for those who need fear of death no longer. In our moments of doubt, help our unbelief. Open our eyes to recognize Him, who even now moves among us in the newness of life, so that we feel the power of the resurrection, and so go forth with courage, rejoicing to do the work of the Lord. Christ is risen, the stone is rolled away, the tomb is empty. Mary calls out, I have seen the Lord, and we have seen Christ too, in every helping hand, in every heartfelt gift, in every choice we make to restore life to this world. We are called to this new life, a life of forgiveness, a life of reconciliation. You are forgiven. Accept your forgiveness and know that God loves you and desires great joy for your life. Walk forward on this journey of faith, knowing your brothers and sisters are all with you. Amen. Please be seated. verses 36 to 49. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for our hymn of response. I come to the garden alone. Number 315.
Please be seated. O oh Lord, direct our thinking, our speaking, and our hearing, that we may more fully know you, and let your word be our lamp in all darkness and doubt. Amen. It's a story told of a judge in Yugoslavia who was electrocuted when he reached up to turn on the light while standing in a bathtub filled with water. Not one of his better moves. He was alone at the time. His wife found his body sprawled on the bathroom floor. The coroner was called in and he was pronounced dead and placed in a room under a crypt in the town cemetery for 24 hours before burial, as was the custom. Now the story gets interesting because in the middle of the night, the judge comes to. He realizes where he is. Not thrilled about it. It's locked. And he rushes over to alert the guard. <coughs> Startled. The guard promptly runs off, terrified. Fortunately for the judge, the guard did come back with a friend. I think it's just so the guard didn't think he was completely insane. And they released the newly revived judge. So the judge's first thought is he has to phone his wife and reassure her that he's okay. But when he called, he got no further than, honey, it's me. When startled, his wife screamed and fainted. So the judge then went to the house of several friends who were all startled and were certain he was a ghost. In a last desperate measure, he contacted a friend in another city who hadn't heard of his death yet. And this person, this witness, was able to convince his family and friends that the judge was truly not dead, but actually alive. Now, can you imagine how the guard felt when, the, when this body he was guarding just started hollering? Or the judge's wife and friends? Maybe the word startled doesn't adequately describe it, but that's the word used. It's the same word that's used to describe how the disciples reached and how they felt when Jesus suddenly appeared in the midst of the upper room. Scripture says they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Understandable. And so is the process of trying to figure it all out and be able to convey that to others. Of course, one way to do that is to tell the story. Telling stories is a natural and very human thing to do. If you can put your facts in a story, it's so much easier to remember. <clears throat> it's why Jesus taught in parables. We have already heard an amazing story from Joanna this morning. And now as we've had some time to process it, we now find the disciples telling their stories in awe and in wonder. They're attempting to put into words and to try to make sense of this overwhelming news and the circumstances of Jesus' resurrection. Something so unexpected, so startling has just happened in their lives that they seek to find a way to make some sort of sense of these events. They talk with one another. They share with one another. They tell their stories. Because it's often the unexpected event, that unplanned experience that attracts our attention. And that's what makes a story come alive. Clearly the fact that Jesus had been seen after such a horrendous and excruciating death was an unexpected event for everyone. 
They were taking hold of the events and using them to shape a story so that they could discover a deeper truth. Luke tells us they disbelieved for joy. It was simply too wonderful to be true. He was alive. He was with them. He was literally right there in their presence, raised from the dead. No wonder they had difficulty believing. And we may still have that problem today. Many desperately want to believe, but something holds them back. See my hands and my feet. The risen Jesus showed the disciples his scars because he was going to send them out to do the work of the Father. The things that he had sent them to do to save wounded people. And they couldn't save wounded people unless they could see and touch and feel and understand Jesus' wounds. So ask yourself, would it make a profound difference in your life to see the hands and feet and side of the risen Christ? Would it cause you to take more seriously your walk with the man of Galilee? Would it have some effect on those goals that you have set for your life? A relationship with Jesus should make a difference in how we choose to live, how we talk to each other, how ready we are to forgive, how well we study for school, how much we show respect for our teachers, how we interact with our children, how we interact with our parents, how we treat strangers, how we work for our employer. When we don't live that difference, it really is startling as to how much damage it can actually do. Philosopher Soren Kierkegaard once told a story about a circus that had caught fire. The flames from the circus fire spread to the fields surrounding the grounds and began to burn toward a village below. The circus master, convinced that the village was in danger and could be destroyed, and a lot of people killed unless they were warned, asked if there was anybody who could go to the village and warn the people. (coughs) One of the members of the circus raised his hand and said, I'm on it. And so he jumped on a bicycle and sped down the hill into the village below. Of course, he didn't have time to change, and he was dressed as a clown. So when this clown came speeding through the town, riding a bicycle, screaming, Run for your lives! Run for your lives! A fire is coming to the village. It's going to burn. Rode up and down the streets. The village is going to burn! Run for your lives! Villagers came out of their houses and shops and stood along the sidewalks. They shouted back, they applauded, they cheered, they waved, and he kept saying, You've got to leave! Run for your lives! Dressed as a clown riding his bicycle back and forth. It was a great show. After all, he's just a clown. It's startling the amount of influence we don't have when we ourselves look like clowns and don't live like Jesus. When we don't live our faith, we're startled when our faith is challenged or when it comes under attack, even though Jesus said, that's going to be normal, normal for Christians who truly live their faith. We're startled when we turn away from those in need because we know they probably buy booze or drugs, money we might give them, and then out of the corner of our eye, that fleeting nanosecond, Did we just see the face of Christ? We're startled when the death of a loved one comes, as it will inevitably do. And we don't know how to handle the grief because we haven't incorporated the truth of the resurrection into our daily lives. So as we celebrate this day and this good news, let's let ourselves be startled Let's let ourselves be startled by Jesus. 
Let the forgiveness He offers through the cross flood through you and wash you clean of everything that keeps you separated from God. Let the good news of the empty tomb bring you new life. Let the power of God's Holy Spirit fill your heart and soul so that you can live like Jesus. Startle God. Startle Jesus. Startle yourself by living a startling life and become a part of the joy. Become a part of that story. Allow Christ to open your mind. Allow Him to deepen your faith. Allow the unexpected to come into your life and into your heart this Easter. Amen. And again, happy Easter to everyone. Some wonderful joys. First of all, a great expression of joy for Nevaeh or Joanna this morning. We always appreciate the wonderful things she does for us, and we will get to see her on Mother's Day again as she continues with her Women of Faith series. A thank you to Paul for breakfast this morning. What a wonderful meal. And for all of the people who have really helped this week in setting up all these different services, Judy and to Marcia and to Sharon and all of you have done just such a tremendous job. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. For our concerns, we turn to those people in our bulletin today. Keep them in your prayers always. Other other joys and concerns that need to be brought to our attention this morning. I'd like to thank everybody for the flowers that everybody provided to decorate the sanctuary. And something new this year, it's going to be like an Easter egg hunt. You have to look for your flower. On each flower, there's a label of dedication or memorial. Um, so you need to look for your flower and take your flower, not somebody else's. <laughs> Read the label and you'll be able to find your flower. So the real trick and challenge is if uh, for the flower to say, in honor of we love mom and dad with the same message, and you know you gotta kind of work that one out. Well, that'll be good. That's good. Wonderful. Yes, the flowers are beautiful. The whole church and the sanctuary looks wonderful. Thank you. Anything else? Let us pray. Our heavenly Father. We thank you for these springtime days when all the earth preaches a glad Easter gospel. As the great stone was rolled away from Christ's tomb, cold winter has been pushed aside by the angel of spring. And we behold a resurrection. Crocuses, daffodils, tulips break forth from the earth. Buds and blossoms burst on limbs of shrubs and trees. The sad dark soil becomes flushed with color as grass is awakened to the sun's tender touch. All that seemed dead comes alive. For these earthly mementos of the resurrection, we are so grateful. For Easter's reminder of Christ's victory over death, we praise you. Let us gladly claim his resurrection, that his presence may companion all of our days, that his example may be the living center of all of our thinking, all of our acting, and his love may govern our behavior toward all your children. We thank you, Lord, for the change that Easter hope makes in all of our days. Through Easter, we see that even the most awful tragedy is made by you into ultimate triumph. Through Easter, we know that Earth's temporary victories are final defeats, and Earth's seeming defeats are often your mighty victories. Our Father, let us look at all of life in the clear light of Easter Day, valuing most highly those things that death cannot corrode or snatch from us. Thus may the truth, the beauty, the goodness of Easter touch all of our tomorrows, and may we live all of our days in the glory of that morning. 
We pray in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
dedicate our gifts today.
Our Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, blessed it, and then broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, and after he had supped, said, This is the New Testament my blood shed for you. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Will the ushers please come forward?
Amen. Please rise. Let us join the prayers found in your answer. Let us pray. Eternal God, this word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. We recognize and confess that we so often fail to respond fully to the gracious presence in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, you have offered us new life, fulfillment, and the freedom to serve you. God of all mercy, forgive all our sin, and strengthen us anew for life as you intended. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. In the company of all the universe, and every time, and beyond time, we come to this peace to know our love in Christ. Let us join our hymn, Come You Faithful, Raise the Strength, number 230. Amen. Mm -hmm. 